What up? This is Mongo Slate. So there's this quote floating around. I haven't been able to verify it independently on my own. I've asked people. <clears throat> I've read wrestling websites. Only one maybe uh, quoted this. It says The Undertaker actually said it. Most people just post uh, the idea of him calling the product soft. But we're going to talk about uh, the privileges of the youth younger generation. But this quote that was been attributed to The Undertaker has really pissed off some people. And it actually got uh, uh, Xavier Woods talking. So I decided to just to just read it. I'm going to read that. I'm going to read Xavier Woods' comment, and I'm going to talk about it. So the quote that has been attributed to The Undertaker that I don't know where it came from because it, it doesn't say where it came from. It's just like a screenshot that's been floating around. It says, in that era, God, that era of guys, too, those were men. You go into a dressing room nowadays, and it's a lot different. I remember walking into my first real dressing room, and all and all I saw were some crusty fucking men. Half of them had guns and knives in their bags. Shit got handled back then. Now you walk in, there's guys playing video games and fucking making sure they look pretty. It's evolution, I guess. I don't know what it is, but I just like those eras, man. I liked when men were men. So, I don't know when he said this. Or if he said it, but we're going to talk today as if this is true, uh, as if this is a, uh, you know, something that he actually said and not just some fake shit that's being floating around. If you can verify this, please do so in the comment section below. I would appreciate it. So uh, before we get into what the, the substance of the quote, which won't be important anyway, because we're not going to talk about Undertaker specifically, is let's talk about uh, Xavier Woods' response to this. Um, it was posted on Twitter, of course, very vague, you know, not to trip over and say too much. But he says, I wouldn't be the person that I am without the guidance and lessons of a few key people from the previous generation of wrestling. They taught me about the business to save my money and that having video games in the locker room is healthier than having redacted. Thank you, guys. And redacted, I'm guessing, means guns, drugs and weapons. But I'm more likely to lean towards weapons, not not weapons, but drugs. OK, so <clears throat> the, the, the overall tone and tenor of The Undertaker's piece is that a lot of these guys are have gotten soft and that a lot of them care more about looking pretty and being in, in great shape, fitness, basically. And in the past, those men were men. Uh, it made, made them. The reason why I don't believe this is real, because that's a very Archie Bunker comment to make. When girls and girls, when men, when men, it's a very uh, all in the family uh, type of quote. And it does. It feels like wrestling media is full of fake shit anyway. But also a lot of people who are, who are doing a lot of quote mining, they didn't mention this. So very interesting. But what I want to talk about is the privilege a lot of the younger guys have. Um, Xavier Woods kind of touched on it a bit. When he talked about the older guys teaching him to save his money and teaching him about the business and yada, yada, yada. Uh, that's a privilege. You know, uh, a lot of those older guys didn't have any idea how to save money because, you know, again, wrestling is a business. People work into their 70s, into the 80s, and, and Luthez did it. You know, some people, some guys work until they die, <laughs> you know. So the idea of saving your money and you know, that money still being there and stuff like that is was is actually fairly recent, you know. So but that's not really the types of privileges that I was thinking of. The number one privilege that a lot of these wrestlers have today that they don't recognize is that they operate in a world where everybody knows it's not real. Just that alone changes the very nature of how they interact with other people how they interact with the business, how they interact with their own coworkers, you know, of the, the boys, how they interact with other people, you know, and we're going to, I'm, I'm going to go, this is just the first thing. The first thing is they operate in a world where people know it's not real. And when you talk about people not knowing it's not real, the number one reason why these guys used to carry weapons is that they used to get attacked. They would get attacked by the audience. They would get Sometimes you would have promoters putting hits on guys. Sometimes you would have guys getting into fights themselves. And there's numerous stories of this stuff. You know, there's got, there's wrestlers who've been stabbed and attacked in riots 
because they pissed off the, the, the crowd so much and the crowd didn't know it's not real. So they're trying to, they're burning the place down. Okay. They're trying to tear everything up. Puerto Rico, Mexico, they are known for this shit, especially the Puerto Rican audiences when Pedro Morales was the champion or he was a top contender or whatever. They were known for burning shit down and throwing chairs and all type of crazy shit. That stuff was dangerous. The wrestling business used to be very, very, very dangerous. And the shit was run like the mob. You had to know somebody to get in. Okay. It wasn't just, you just show up at some happy camp and then start doing reps and now you're in, you know, th these guys have like all of these undertaker level type of guys tell the same stories about going to some mystical training facility. And there's some old dude farting and burping. And he decides he's going to want to break somebody's leg or he's going to work you damn near to death. Like Vern Gagne did. Vern Gagne worked a hundred pounds off of Ric Flair once trying to, trying to get these guys to quit. So they wouldn't come to the rest. So they wouldn't try to be wrestlers a hundred pounds. Ric Flair was like 285 pounds, like 385 pounds or some shit. Um, and then he went to train with Vern Gagne. He worked a hundred pounds off of them. That's how much he worked. Those guys, they call that what, what they would call it hazing today. And you can't do it. So it's a privilege. Right. They will say, oh, you're hazing. You're using rough language. You're hazing. You would never get away with it today. You, you hear stories about wrestlers pulling guns on wrestlers. Superstar Bill Dundee pulled a gun on Randy Savage because he thought Randy Savage and, and his dad. And uh, I think uh, I think the genius was there, too. Lenny, he thought they were going to jump him because Randy had punched him in the face because they got into an argument. You know, you never knew what one of the boys was going to pull a gun on you. Hell, Harley Race pulled a gun on Hulk Hogan because he was running in his town. What you doing in my territory? Pull the gun on him. There's the, the wrestling business is littered with stories like that. These guys don't have to worry about that shit because one, it's national. You don't have to worry about the territory problems. Two, everybody knows it's not real. So it, you don't have to worry about the riots. The worst thing you have now is people just decide not to watch you anymore. Back then, they would try to kill you. Numerous times, people have been, <laughs> they tried to kill a wrestler. Literally, kill him. It's a privilege for you to work in a reality where you don't have to deal with that stress of keeping it real. But Bill Watts used to fire guys if they lost bar fights. If you lost a fight in the street, Bill Watts will fire you. Because that will prove that you're not tough. And people would... If the word would spread around that you got knocked out in a bar fight or whatever, he'd fire you. And he wasn't the only one. He was just the one that was very loud about it. So you didn't have to be tough. Now you don't even have to be tough anymore. You don't even have to pretend. You can just be a straight up theater student and be a respectable wrestler. And I didn't even mention, of course, the big one, the big issue where you got Brody, Bruiser Brody getting stabbed in Puerto Rico and getting killed by one of the boys. This type of stuff happens, would happen regularly. There was always somebody getting into fights, somebody always getting jumped, the crowd trying to jump you, the other boys trying to jump you, you running, you running outlaw in somebody's territory, so they putting hits out on you. This stuff was regular, so yes, they carried weapons. They didn't have time for the bullshit, okay? They were looking out for themselves. That was serious. You are privileged if you think that, well, I don't have to carry any weapons. I don't know why you would need that, you know? You're also very privileged in terms of how you're taken care of. Guys, today, since the 90s, you could thank Hall and Nash, I guess, for this, and maybe Hogan, the guaranteed contracts, which is as good as a union job at this point. Now people get paid regardless of how they produce. You don't even have to be a draw, you get paid. You don't even have to go to work and you get paid. Back in the day, those guys had to work or they did not get paid. They were not getting a salary. So yeah, they were dead serious about somebody coming into their territory because if they couldn't work, they couldn't eat. The idea of having a salary was ri ridiculous. It wasn't until the national TV era that they started having salaries. I'm talking regular salaries. That's, and, and that, of course, that goes also into medical care and stuff like that, where you have big multinational corporations like TNT 
or you know WWE or whatever paying for your medical care. That stuff didn't start happening until recently too, within the last 30 or 40 years. So you had some guys, fucking Buddy Rogers had a fucking heart attack and still had to go to work. You know, Vince and Jay McMahon kind of, you know, he, he looked out for him. The match is only four seconds. I think the Bruno match. But they, these guys did not have that, that cushion that these young people have. You know, there were no royalties. Because, hell, there was barely any fucking merchandise. So all of these different streams of income that were created within the last few uh, decades, all of that stuff is new as well. You know, so you're like, oh, I, I want royal my, my royalties for my likeness. It's like, yeah, but back in the day, there were barely any merchandise to sell. You were lucky to have a T-shirt. <laughs> you know, you were, and you're, you get to be an international celebrity now. Where those guys used to be known within, you know, a hundred miles in any direction. You know, if they were lucky. You were a big star if you were known in a separate state. You were a huge star if you were known in three different territories. You know, Dusty used to be known in several different de- territories. That's what made him a superstar. You know? But that's not even the case today. Not t- t- The case today is people are having... Matches in front of millions of people and it's their first televised match and they've been in the business less than five or ten years. It's a privilege. So when you, when you see like these older guys and they are criti- criticizing the youth, they are saying things like maybe, you know, it's too many video games and not enough, you know, dudes chasing broads and stuff like that. I mean, it's a different world. You know, it's a completely different world. You know, and it's not like they're trying to be disrespectful, I don't believe. Because I do believe that respect is a two-way street. You should respect the youth and the youth should respect the elders. Granted that the person, the individual person has earned your respect. Not just saying like blanket respect everybody. Because some people just are not worthy of respect. And you do respect a disservice by trying to <laughs> respect everybody. But when you have... The, these people and a lot of the fans have gotten really when these generational arguments, you, you typically see the older fans and the younger fans, the younger fans typically say, Oh no, I can't believe these bitter old guys say stuff like this. And then the older fans are like, yeah, a lot of you young people are pussies, you know? And I try not to do that. I'm trying to bridge the gap. I'm trying to show the younger people who are maybe listening. Wrestling used to be very dangerous. That's where the place these older guys are coming from. They're saying, hey, if I would went out there and threw pancakes, Bill Watts would have beat my ass. Not he would have fired me. Bill Watts would have literally punched you in the fucking face. And then dared you to do something. What you going to do, go to court? Because guys have tried that. They went, they, people tried the shit that you might be thinking. I'm going to tell everybody that the shit's not real. They did that and they firebombed people's houses for it. Bullshit you not. There's books written on it. <laughs> this, this used to be a serious, serious business. Try going and telling people that's not real. Try pulling a right back and saying, oh, it's all just a prop. Yeah, they really would have fucked him up. Seriously. The next part, next time he got in the ring with somebody, somebody would have jammed their thumb in his fucking eye. They would have broke his goddamn arm on purpose. This is how wrestling used to be. And some guys are still like that and they're still active. You know, I just learned from one of my subscribers that, you know, uh, the original La Parka was actually all right with Rosemary getting her arm broken. This was a couple of years ago. This was like six years ago where Sexy Star went into business for herself and snapped Rosemary's arm. You're like, how could that be? How could somebody be so evil, so mean? <laughs> You're like, this is the wrestling business. You never know what's going on in somebody's head. So yeah, they used to carry guns. They used to try. They used to have to go to work because if they didn't work, they didn't get paid. So yeah, they did drugs too. Not just because they was partying, but also because they was self-medicating. Which you know, if you believe that there's still no drugs, you're out of your fucking mind. Paige is less than thirty years old, and she was a drug addict. And it's kind of odd that she was. 
in this situation. And one of the people quoted in this uh, conversation so far was in a sexual situation with Paige where she was probably fucked up. Just saying, just putting that out there. And I'm not saying that he did anything. I'm just saying, you know, she wasn't on the up and up and she's a friend of his. Let's just say that. And it wasn't just her. It was numerous people. The drugs are still in the locker room. You can have drugs and video games. Hell, I know that. I've been in the dope house. <laughs> so I know that just because you're doing playing video games, that doesn't mean you're not snorting or popping pills. Okay, I'm not, I'm not stupid. But these guys have been getting a lot of heat for the video games. You know, um, and... It is what it is. I'm not, I don't have nothing against video games because I played video games when I was a kid, you know? And a lot of these guys are in my age group. I just kind of, you know, it became a very expensive hobby for me. So I was kind of like not paying $600 for a video game system. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> but guys have always tried to find different ways of, you know, occupying their time, you know? playing cards, playing dominoes, whatever. Some people say it's no different between playing cards or playing dominoes. And I say, well, it's not, but mm, it kind of is too. Because playing dominoes, playing cards is very competitive. And, you know, some guys, and if you're, if you're, if your card games have ever gotten as randy as some of the card games I saw growing up, some of the dominoes that I saw growing up, you probably need a gun or a knife for that shit too. Because I've seen motherfuckers get beat up over a game of dominoes. I've seen it. You play a game of spades and you then somebody down the right to flip a table. Nobody ever killed anybody over a game of chess. I can tell you that. But dominoes, spades, hell yeah. Hell, there's stories of Andre. Get damn near fucking people over, <laughs> over a card game. You know, like this stuff is, is used to be far more dangerous than it is now. And the fans are lucky that you have this social media where you can complain that the, that the, that the trainers are being too rough, that, you know, the guys that you were hanging out with, they were doing bad things. And, you know, now you can shame on you, bad man. You were doing bad stuff back in, back then. Nobody gave a shit. You were expected to take care of yourself. There was no nanny state. There was no government. There was no, you know, the, the running to the government was, was basically a death sentence. Run into the media or something like that to get you fucked up and kicked out of the business completely. Now you may have to change jobs. You know? And, you know, it's crazy because you got guys like Luchasaurus who was one of the snitches that's told on Bill DeMott. Now he's on national TV every week. That would not have happened in 1986. If you could have told somebody, oh my God, this guy, he was hazing me. No other promoter. Whether they agree with it or not would have signed you because you fuck, you fucking talk too much. But now he gets to be on national TV every week. He's a tattletale and he gets to be on TV every week. That's a privilege. That's a privilege of living and being around in the wrestling business right now. Because you couldn't make it 25 years ago, 30 years ago. Completely different world. Now, whether you think it's good or bad, that's a personal choice. I'm just laying the information out there. And just like, I don't know whether Undertaker really said that or not. I can't tell people how to feel about it. If you think that the wrestling business is better than it is now, fine. Than it used to be, fine. If you think it's not, fine. That's that's a personal issue. I'm just saying that a lot of wrestling fans are really privileged. And a lot of wrestlers are really privileged. And they don't really recognize it. They're so busy shaking their fingers at, you know, saying Undertaker or whoever... Undertaker, because the quote was attributed to him, is a, a bitter old man. It's like, you know, these guys are no less men. It's like, well, if you're whining, then you kind of are. You know, I don't see anybody giving a shit. You know, unless they were going to put some fucking hands on you. But all these protections and, and wonderful benefits that these people have, you know, nah, there's no way. And yeah, sometimes people <clears throat> joke that Alexa Bliss and and uh, Ric Flair have to share the same job description and say, like, how can that be? It's like because the wrestling business changed, you know, 
there's always been women's wrestlers though. So that that situation is being is not, you know, out of out of the ordinary. You know? Women used to fight in the Roman gladiatorial games, believe it or not. Women actually used to wrestle in the Olympics against men. Um, they didn't do very well all the time, but they used to. You know, it's, it's, the world is always changing. You know, it's all about whether other people want to pay attention to it or not. Wrestling used to be dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Now you get, like, when you see stuff like uh, the Best Friends t-shirt, and it's like them hugging and kissing. There's hearts. It's pink, and it's got hearts all over it. And it was made by a man for a trio of men. And you kind of have to say to yourself, that's what wrestling is now. And then all of these people get really upset when I'm guessing Undertaker really did say it or whatever. Uh, when somebody says something about it, it's like you really get, you get real tight assed about somebody dissing your video games. And all of a sudden, you know, you want respect. But you're crying about video games. Look, I, like I said, I was a I was a gamer as a kid. You know, I, I still respect video games. I respect the people who actually stood up for themselves when people started coming after them for playing video games. One thing that I, I did learn is that playing video games is not a fucking personality, bro. It's not. It's a hobby. You know, I'm all for protecting your hobbies. I'm all for it. But you also got to realize when... People inside your hobby is a problem, right? Like the biggest problem with, I don't want to say the words Gamergate, but I need to say it. The biggest problem with Gamergate were the traders, the gamers who were supporting the people attacking Gamergate. They were the bigger problems. The apostates are the biggest problem always. It's always the people who are inside who then start talking about how everything is toxic and how we need to be, we need to be more welcoming. We need to be more inclusive. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, people are getting banned for stupid shit. Stuff that used to ride before can't ride no more. You know, stuff that about, you know, things like there was a song, it's, you know, the Nas song. It's called Carry On Tradition. You know, if you're talking about wrestling, they used to have to carry on tradition. You know, that's really was the reason why they used to, you know, verbally beat the shit out of people verbally and sometimes even physically. Is to run them out of the business because they didn't want any soft motherfuckers in the business. Right? They didn't want no cupcakes in the business. Even if they came in and started doing weird stuff like Adrian Street or, or Gold Dust, those people were legit. They were still respected men even though they weren't doing quote-unquote manly things. They were cross-dressing and kissing men in the mouth and stuff like that. But they had already, they had already laid their groundwork as being respectable, upstanding dudes. They had went through the system, you know, and then they had they earned the right to do whatever they wanted. You know, now you just got dudes just showing up and they just they're friends with somebody else and they're friends with somebody else. And now it's become one big click. It's, you know, and this is what your business is now. Your business isn't tough guys who earn respect. And sometimes they did childish shit, dumb shit, you know, because that's bound to happen. Because you, when even even dipshits can survive the crucible, sometimes you know you, you you set up this system to weed out dipshits, and sometimes a dipshit gets in, you know you might have to deal with them or put them off to the side or something, but for the most part, it was a system created to get rid of dipshits, you know, and you stop you stop you stop uh, pleb filtering, you just start letting anybody in, and that's the death of the hobby, that's the death of the business, you know. It's it's the, it's the same thing, man. You know, I respected the people who stood up for themselves, but there's a lot of people who are riding for video games today in the locker rooms. Everybody in the locker room should be playing video games. Who, you know, when it when it comes time to to ride on these people who are calling you toxically masculine and all that other bullshit, you bowing down and kneeling, you know, you kneeling. You know, you don't protect yourself. You want to protect your video games. Look, man. <laughs> don't talk about my video games. But you can call my friend a rapist, and I'm not going to say anything. That's the wrestling business today. You can call somebody I've known for a decade a rapist with no goddamn evidence. I'm not going to say shit. But don't you dare say nothing about my video games. 
Don't say shit about my video games. You can call my friend a, a rapist, a racist, whatever. But do not, don't you dare talk about my video games. Where's the fucking te integrity in that? Nobody stood up for their friends during this whole speaking out engagement and said, you know what, I don't believe that shit. You know? Or prove it in court or something. St nobody stood up with what all these dudes who claim to be friends with these people. This is the new wrestling business where everybody's friends. Except for when shit get real, then nobody's friends anymore. It's throw you under the bus. You know, even the supposed tough guys in the fucking groups. They all just gave up. They wilted like dead flowers and just was like, okay, well, I don't know what to do. Guys threw their friends under the bus. But you want respect. You don't get no respect. You don't have the integrity. You And it's not even just because you letting... Weirdos come into the business. That's not even a problem. Weirdos already been there. That's fucking pedophiles from the 80s and stuff like that. I wish they'd have gotten caught and gotten their asses beat. You know? But what what you're doing today, it ain't working. Wrestling used to be dangerous, bro. It used to be a dangerous business. You know, a lot of these people are privileged. To be able to walk around here with this, with these weak ass shirts and, you know, the twerking and the throwing of the pancakes and you know, everybody hugging and these dudes are holding hands and, you know, like all that stuff, man, that's a privilege. <laughs> you definitely wouldn't be able to do that shit in 1980, anything, you know, and a lot of these old dudes are just too old to care. Most of them just gone on doing their own thing. They just created their old, old ass clique and they don't even pay it. They don't even watch this shit, you know? That's how you get, you know, when the Hall of Fames and stuff happening, they don't even know what's going on. They stay too busy talking about old stories. They don't even know none of these motherfuckers today. There's no link between these people. There used to be links. There used to be Luthez was in these locker rooms with some of these young, with the young guys. They knew him. He knew them. You know, Bruno, same thing. But then it, it came like it hit a glitch at some point where the older dudes are just kind of like, hey, look. The young boys are doing their thing. I'm out here doing this thing. And the young boys are on the screen doing all the flips and almost breaking their necks. Five stars, five stars, you know, and whatever. You know, nobody cares. There was no, there was a break in those generations. There was no link in between the generations. And I don't know whose fault that is. Is it the fault of the older people or the younger people? I don't know. I don't really care. But all I know is wrestling used to be dangerous. It's not that dangerous anymore. You know, you used to believe that wrestler was a tough guy. Now you kind of know that he isn't, you know, and he's a cupcake on the inside because you say something about his precious video games. He gets mad. You say something about his say something about his actual friends that he supposedly rode with for years and years. Say nothing. No words at all. Say something about his video games, though. You know, he got a tweet about you and all that shit. Stupid. Stupid shit. I'm not even just talking about Xavier Woods. I'm just talking about everybody. You know, the fans too. The fans are probably like, oh, you know, that that is nah, I'm not even gonna go into that. But I'm just saying, look at what the business used to be and look at what the business is now. That's all I'm gonna say. You know? And if some people are happier, you know, and I and I do believe that people living longer is the better option. But you can live long, live healthy, and not be a fucking pussy. Th those two things do not have to be the same thing. You know, you don't have to be a pushover and you only get tough in large groups or when, you know, you feel like you've been attacked or threatened or your hobby has been attacked or threatened. How about when people are attacking and threatening your livelihood? I mean, none of these motherfuckers had anything to say when some of the same people who are riding with them now because they dissed video games was like, shut it down. Everybody should lose their job. You know, there was a stretch there where some of these same people wanted you to sit at home for months and months without getting paid. Come on, bro. You ain't got no spine. Why are you growing a spine now? Because it's easy. It ain't going to cost you nothing. That's the, that's the thing, man. It's like, it's weird. It's really weird. Wrestling used to be dangerous. It's not dangerous anymore. It's filled with cupcakes. You know, sweetie pies. And it is what it is. You know, I'm still a fan. You know, I, I, I've i made the transition. I realize that wrestling is not going to be what it is in the 80s. I can respect what it was in the 80s. I can respect what it was in the 90s, in the 2000s, and I can respect what it is today. 
it's, it's sort of the same thing. It's just, you know, it's an evolution. But I'm going to call it like I see it. And I see a lot of pussy ass wrestlers. And it just is what it is. You know? If I feel like I can just walk up to you and smack you in the face, then I don't respect you as, <laughs> on that level. I respect you as a performer. But I didn't feel like I could walk up and smack Vader or smack Stan Hansen or even smack some of the tough Japanese dudes like Kobashi or Masawa without getting thrown on my neck. Some of these dudes now, man, they talk tough, you know, but they're performers. They're theater students. They want to go and play dress up and play with their friends. They want to do flips with their buddies. You know, that's what they want. And let them fucking have it. I'm, I, I hope Undertaker really did say it. Because I'm all for it, man. Let them motherfuckers have it. <laughs> let them have the business, dog. You know, you did your part. Everybody did their best. You know, you don't see. It is what it is, man. Just throw your hands up and walk away. Like, you got people burying Tracy Smothers because he wore the Confederate flag. You know, you got people, um, you know, it's just, it's dumb. The free bird, same thing. It's like no respect, none at all. No, no, no knowledge of the past, no knowledge of culture, no knowledge of history, no knowledge of nothing. It's all politics and click shit. It's like high school all over again. It's basically, you can see that from Twitter. You can just see it from Twitter, how wrestling has changed from, you know, dudes talking about dude shit. When you see Steve Austin sitting down with Undertaker, that's, you know, different shit. That's a different energy than when you seeing butt fucking guys, you know, Sean Ross Sapp sit down with fucking Kenny Omega for an interview, you know, or, or, or Ryan Satin or something, you know, it's a completely different energy. One looks like grown folks talking. Another one looks like, you know, they're adults, but are they really? And this could be a critique on manhood in general, in the in the plummeting manhood in general, if we want to be honest. But I don't want to go that deep. I've already gone far enough. But wrestling used to be dangerous. It used to be fun because it was dangerous. You know? But now, whatever, man. It's just whatever. You know? It's sad. <laughs>